Chapter 3. Concerning the Southern Work. Extracts from talks given by Mrs. E. G. White at the General Conference Meeting, Washington, D.C., May 1909. Highland Schools as Evangelizing Agencies. On my journey to Washington, I had some experience in going not only to the highways, but also to the hedges. I saw something of the work that is being done in the mission schools near Nashville. Little companies of workers are going out into the mountains and laboring for those who have not heard the message, and here and there little companies of believers are being raised up. Who would dare to put their hand on such workers and say, You must not labor thus, it costs too much? Can it compare with the sacrifice that Christ made in order to save perishing souls? My brethren and sisters, I ask you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth to take your light from under the bushel and let it shine forth that others may be profited. The General Conference Bulletin, May 17, 1909 Give the schools liberty to carry out God's plans. There are our schools. They are to be conducted in such a way that they will develop missionaries who will go out to the highways and hedges to sow seeds of truth. This was the commission of Christ to his followers. Do not allow any man to come in as an arbitrary ruler and say, You must not go here, and you must not go there, you must do this, and you must not do that. We have a great and important work to do, and God would have us take hold of that work intelligently. The placing of men in positions of responsibility in various conferences does not make them gods. No one has sufficient wisdom to act without counsel. Men need to consult with their brethren, to counsel together, to pray together, and to plan together for the advancement of the work. Let laborers kneel down together and pray to God, asking Him to direct their course. There has been a great lack with us on this point. We have trusted too much to men's devisings. We cannot afford to do this. Perilous times are upon us, and we must come to the place where we know that the Lord lives and rules, and that He dwells in the hearts of the children of men. We must have confidence in God. There are schools to be established in foreign countries and in our own country. We must learn from God how to manage these schools. They are not to be conducted as many of them have been conducted. Our institutions are to be regarded as God's instrumentalities for the furtherance of His work in the earth. We must look to God for guidance and wisdom. We must plead with Him to teach us how to carry the work solidly. Let us recognize the Lord as our teacher and guide, and then we shall carry the work in correct lines. In all our schools, we need to have a correct understanding of what the essential education is. Men talk much of higher education, but who can define what the higher education is? The highest education is found in the word of the living God, that education which teaches us to submit our souls to God in all humility, and which enables us to take the word of God and believe just what it says is the education that is most needed. If men will not move in concert in the great and grand work for this time, there will be confusion. It is not a good sign when men refuse to unite with their brethren and prefer to act alone. On the other hand, the leaders among God's people are to guard against the danger of condemning the methods of individual workers who are led by the Lord to do a special work that but few are fitted to do. Let brethren in responsibility be slow to criticize the movements that are not in perfect harmony with their methods of labor. Let them never suppose that every plan should reflect their own personality. Let them not fear to trust another's methods, for by withholding their confidence from a fellow brother laborer, who, with humility and consecrated zeal, is doing a special work in God's appointed way, they are retarding the advancement of the Lord's cause. God can and will use those who have not a thorough education in the schools of men. A doubt of His power to do this is manifest unbelief. There are hundreds of our people who ought to be out in the field who are doing little or nothing for the advancement of the message. The General Conference Bulletin, May 31, 1909 The Education to be Offered in Our Schools 
There are many who believe that in order to be fitted for acceptable service, they must go through a long course of study under learned teachers in some school of the world. This they must do, it is true, if they desire to secure what the world calls essential knowledge. But we do not say to our youth, you must study, study, keeping your mind all the time on books. Nor do we say to them, you must spend all the time in acquiring the so-called higher education. Let us ask, what is the object of true higher education? Is it not that we may stand in right relation to God? The test of all education should be, is it fitting us to keep our minds fixed upon the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? The General Conference Bulletin, May 30, 1909, page 214. Manual Training, a Necessary Part of Every Curriculum our youth should be taught from their very childhood how to exercise the body and the mind proportionally. It is not wise to send the children to schools where they are subject to long hours of confinement and where they will gain no knowledge of what healthful living means. Place them under the tuition of those who respect the body and treat it with consideration. Do not place your children in an unfavorable position where they cannot receive the training that will enable them to bear test and trial. Students need not talk of their attainments in the so-called higher education if they have not learned to eat and drink to the glory of God and to exercise brain, bone, and muscle in such a way as to prepare for the highest possible service. The whole being must be brought into exercise if we would secure a healthy condition of mind. The mental and the physical power should be used proportionally. To those who are desirous of being efficient laborers in God's cause, I would say, if you are putting an undue weight of labor on the brain, thinking you will lose ground unless you study all the time, you had better change your views and your course of action. Unless greater care is exercised in this respect, there are many who will go down to the grave prematurely. This you cannot afford to do, for there is a world to be saved. Everywhere, everywhere, the truth is to stand forth in its glorious power and in its simplicity. Do not boast of what you know, but take your case to God. Say to Him, I comply with the conditions. The General Conference Bulletin, May 30, 1909, page 214.